Hey guys, welcome back to the Hustlin' Horsepower YouTube channel. Myself, Lady Gangster, MVP, Sexy Rexy, we all appreciate all of you that support this journey. In the last few videos, you saw Miley turn in one, and we got ourselves a new toter home. Then, we started this build series here of putting the new motor together. Miley, uh, Lady Gangster, helped me get the new bullet together. Guys, we do have merchandise at HustlinHorsepower.com for those that want to support this journey. We also got to give a sh huge shout out to Scott Hayes. Uh, he came by and gave us a pretty cool little present here. Uh, this Milwaukee light's going to do us wonders. As we're putting this motor together, guys, make sure to like and subscribe and follow the whole series. Well, guys, <clears throat> this might be part two of the engine assembly video because, you know, I went through and did a lot of prep work on this motor and stuff like that before we got to this point. This motor was going to be in the motor before um that race in september we only ran the car once after after that race but we did make it to the finals of a 72 car field and we had an issue with the crank trigger in the finals but this motor was supposed to be in that problem is um i have the new ones here uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. on the the machine shop originally uh ordered up these wrist pins right here um way undersized in my opinion um they were only like a 200 roll piston these are like 260 or something like that um that's that's just weak when these guys when these guys start flexing so we got uh connecting rods here um these are an inch 90 inch 094 uh wrist pin it's more like a, a hemi style pin much stronger uh because after that whole debacle i just decided to go you know we're all in now, basically, after we've made some money there. Um, so this Intro 94 diameter um, is a little bit stronger in the, inherently, uh, but with this much larger 200, I think it's right around 260 thousandths um, wrist pin on this one. Uh, when this goes in here, and you got the pin bosses on the pistons here. Doo -doo -doo. Yeah. When this goes in here, you have a m whole lot less likely chance of this flexing. When this flexes, um, you lose oil because the way the oil comes through here and stuff like that. When this flexes, it causes a lot of problems. So um, long story short, I elected not to use that motor. Um, the rotating assembly, essentially. I had the uh, Carrillo billet rods that I might put up for sale. Um, I have these exact same pistons, um, but they have a 990 pin in them. Um, the 990 pin, I'm not overly afraid of, but they were 200,000 thick. So now I have, um, I had a decent crank. I had, um, 990 pins with steel billet rods, which definitely not bad. Um, but that 200,000 pin was all screwed up. So now, um, the billet crank that I bought, uh, was not the right rod journal. So now it was a big cluster. So long story short. Um, we scrapped all that stuff. Um, the guys at ProTech Racing up in Canada had um, another billet crank, or sorry, not a billet crank, a Kelly's Magnum crankshaft, which is a very high quality crankshaft. Um, and uh, you can make good power with the, uh, the Kelly's Magnum. But I think we're going to be running the billet crankshaft that's in this box. It is not. I don't know if it's that manufacturer or not. But uh, we're going to be putting the billet crankshaft in there with these pistons, with the... Um, Intro 94, 260,000 wall uh, wrist pins. We're going to be using buttons on this deal because if you're seeing here, doo -doo, when this gets assembled, I'll come up here and show you that this ring land is removed. So if this wasn't here, you could have the flex in here. So when these buttons go in here, and these actually just float back and forth once it's all assembled. So when we're assembling the rods, um, woo! when we're assembling the rods on the pistons and stuff like that, of course the dome goes on the bottom. So this is number one. The tang has to go on the outside. So this one has to assemble, odd side assembles this way. Um, and then of course four of them have to be opposite. Then when you go through, you gotta orientate all the rings and stuff like that. But we'll be getting to that until a little later in the video. But um, this, a uh, button style pin is uh it's a pretty good pretty good style 
You could use spiral rocks. Some some of them use a spiral spiral lock style locking pin to hold the wrist pins. But uh, these are just uh, buttons or kisser buttons or whatever you want to call them. And these actually just float back and forth. But you have no uh, side tension on them. So they fit in there pretty well. They're tight fit though. So we're going to get after it. Start uh, slapping some rods on some pistons. Uh, get all those done. And then we might uh, start putting the rings on the pistons. We went through and uh, I file fit all the rings. And uh, they'll have to be in a previous video. But like to here, this is number eight. Um, the top and the second ring. So um, the top ring is always harder than the second ring. So you always do the second ring first. The lower ring. Um, you file fit that one first. Because if you were doing it the opposite way, um, you'll burn through the second ring and your gaps will be all off. So I always use an actual file fit. Um, that'll be in a previous video. But uh, yeah, you just got to sneak up on them. I always count my strokes because uh, X amount of strokes will get you X amount of distance. So um, yeah, we're going to get after this deal. Rings are all file fit for the block. The block will be up to temperature. Um, here shortly, I brought it in last night. Uh, rods, everything that was all brought in yesterday, so they're up to temperature. So um, we should be good to start assembling this thing. Uh, I still gotta check the clearances on the rods, but they should be good. Well guys, what do you know? We got a problem. So when you put the piston in here, boom. See how the piston sits offset towards the dome? Um, that is because the inner structure here on this piston is uh, favors the dome. So what does that mean? We can't get our pin in there because it's offset. So we either gotta narrow up the rod a little bit, but the rods are replaced more often than the pistons, hopefully. So we might just have to go in here and clearance this side just a hair bit. This side right here on the, is fine. And if this structure here, and that structure here was um, symmetrical, uh, we'd be perfectly fine. But since this structure is offset in the pin boss, one reason or another, not exactly sure why, uh, might be a structural thing, but that might be, be on my pay scale. But if this, this boss here and this boss here, um, were centered in the pin, well, we'd be good to slap these things together. But, um, that is not the case. So, uh, I don't freaking know. It is what it is. I think we're going to go in there with the finger finger grinder and uh, just, just clean these up just a hair bit so those rods will slide in there. So now we have our side clearance here. And you can see in here, it clears. So I'm just going through and making some little Sharpie marks. Because we need to basically go the width of the big end or the small end of the rod when you make this flat area a radius here because you can see here that that guy right there gets into it that line that one right there is deeper so it's, it's perfectly fine but you can see the center of the uh, these two humps here is not the center of the pin so we got to Gotta massage these a little bit. It's not much. It's not much to do with the uh, integrity of the piston uh, because we're not really removing much material at all. And I'm, uh, when I'm going through there, I'm also rolling the edges so that there's no 90 degree um, fatigue spots in there. So we should be good. So guys, this is the third one. So I'm basically a professional now. Just a blind one because I can't see. But you know, it is what it is. So guys, as I'm going through here, I marked out the areas that need to be clearance. Uh, this is not ideal, but at the same time, uh, I'm going about it in a way that I'm removing the least amount of material as possible, uh, which really isn't uh, anything significant. It was literally probably 30 thousandths of material to be able to get our side clearance, if that. Um, so I go through here, round out the edges and stuff like that, and just work them. Probably took about anywhere from five to 10 minutes, uh, five to 10 minutes, a piston uh, just to slowly go through here using the finger wheel 
you're able to get in there and reach into the crevices and uh, it worked pretty well. After I went through and sanded these deals, of course I blow them out with the air hose and then I washed them again uh, in the shop sink, uh, just some soap and water, uh, making sure that those there's no material in there. Uh, Jeremy has a pretty cool, um, pretty good quality air compressor in here with a filtration system. So after that, I went through and blew them out again, made sure there's no crevices. Of course, you got to clean yourself off as well. Make sure there's not going to be any metal shavings uh, in your work area. So guys, now that we've got uh, five to ten minutes into each pistons, uh, each piston getting our side clearances right, it's time to uh, start assembling again. So I'm just going to video uh, putting one together, um, one of these together. When you do this, you know what I mean? Odd side of the motor, even side of the motor, and then the tang goes to the outside of the block. So number one will be like this, and the tang to the outside of the block. So we're going to go through here, and uh, we're going to go through, use a little bit of um, assembly lube, get the piston... Uh, the pin bosses inside the inside the um, small bore. Loop this up, slam it all together, put it off to the side, label it number one. And we'll do one, three, five, seven, and then we'll go two, four, six, eight. So. After going through all that, I didn't video it, but uh, I went through and I washed. Um, Washed out the pistons real good. Blew them out with the um, air compressor. And the air compressor here at Jeremy's does have a pretty good filtration system on it because uh, they do a little bit of painting and stuff like that. So there is a good filtration system on the uh, air compressor. If you don't, um, you might not necessarily want to use it for such a thing. But uh, go through here. We're going to put some uh, straight like 50 weight. Uh, on these two before we slam them in the motor, but for right now, uh, this will work. This stuff's pretty sticky, it's like really stringy, so. Guys, you can't, I don't want to say you can't use too much of this stuff, but uh, whatever, the, clear, the clearances are set. Um, if you didn't, uh, go through that. You gotta go through that and check all your clearances. But any of the extra uh, lubrication, I should say, um, assembly lube, it will just push it out. So. Boom 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 boom. All right, guys. So you could go here. Now that's got the sticky stuff on there, you can't hear it as well, but you can see the side clearance on there. Good enough. And uh, go through. Put the kisser buttons in there. Boom. Go through on this side. Boom. There you go. There's one rod and piston assembly for an odd side. Boom. Now we're going to go do that eight more times. And then we'll go through and start putting uh, rings on these suckers. And then uh, start slamming them in the motor. Eventually, before I cut the video here, eventually I want to get a piston rack. So you can put all these suckers on there, and then you can put all the rings on them, boom, boom, boom. But I usually put the rings on them before I slam them in the motor, because I don't have one of those fancy piston racks. They're really not that fancy, but they're really nice to have. Because you go and put this whole assembly on there, and it holds the whole deal. Eventually I'll get one of those suckers, but... For now, I'll put it off to the side. That'll be number one. So guys, these rings are already file fit, and you can see there's that little dot right there, okay? From the top, I don't know if you can see it or not, you can see it. There's a beveled on that inside edge, and there's a dot there, okay? 
You could see the dot on this one as well. Where is it? Doo -doo -doo. It's hard to see. Where are you at? Oh, it's upside down. There's a dot right there, okay? But you can see the beveled edge is on the opposite side of the beveled dot. The beveled dot on this one means, with the dot being on the opposite side, that means it's a second ring. Um, the way it works is the beveled edge um, is expanding and scraping the oil off of the cylinder walls. This one here, the compression on the top of the piston, of course, is spreading this ring out, adding to the seal. So if the dot and the beveled edge are on the same side, that means it's a top ring. If they're on opposite sides, it means it's the second ring. A little tech tip for you as I'm going to throw these on. Um, I got all the oil expander rings on here. These, uh, to my understanding, take off the majority of the oil off the cylinder wall. Um, and it, they also help. Um, you can see the little holes in the pistons. And those go and lubricate the wrist pin and so on and so forth. Um, but... We're gonna start putting these on second rings. Also, the tension on this, the tension on this one's a little bit weaker. Tension on this one is a little bit stronger. This is a harder ring. This is a little bit slightly softer ring. That's why you always file fit the second ring first. It's a little bit softer material. If you do the hard one first, you'll burn right through this one. And if you're aiming for a 30,000 scap, you'll end up with a 40,000 scap because you're pressing too hard. Well, guys, I'm getting ready to do the last one, number <clears throat> number eight, that is going to be. So, um, when you're doing this, of course, set it again, set it multiple times, to make sure all the stuff's clean, higher tension ring, boop, boop. I mean, the higher tension ring, is also the one with the color on it, the dot always goes up towards the top, so, second ring, <clears throat> bevel down, <clears throat> and the dot will always go to the top. Slap that sucker on there. Go through there. I always cycle it. Make sure it's not going to stick. Um, you got to inspect. That's why I always clean this stuff. And uh, I always make sure my hands are clean. Wash my hands before I'm doing this stuff. And, you know, just use like a normal like dish soap or whatever, right? Um, not like a mechanic scope that's got all the grit in it. You don't want to be putting rig stuff in your motor. The light was playing tricks on me right there. Rotate the rings, make sure that they're nice and loose. So guys, this deal right here, borrowed it from my buddy Donnie. Um, I was talking about it earlier in the video, but the video shut off. But this thing right here is friggin' slick. Um, this is for a four and a half inch bore, cause it's a four and a half inch bore motor. You gotta get them, you know, four or five, uh, 10, 20, 30, whatever. Your bore is here. So these slide on. And I'm not going to do it because you got to oil this sucker up a little bit. But this slides on there like that. And you put it on. We'll be doing it here shortly. You put it in the block and boom. It works freaking phenomenal. These things, I'm going to have to buy one eventually. Um, they're not a lot of money, but you know. $50 or $50. And if I spent $50 on every little $50 item I'd like to have, well... We wouldn't be racing so um the pistons rings aren't uh orientated uh the top and the middles because the top and middles move a whole lot easier than lowers um the oil expander rings but uh we will check those uh when we go to install and then we'll orientate the top rings as well um i use this cool little um i use this uh sheet from uh old school hot rod and big block chevys or whatever it is um, when I orientate my rings. The reason for that is um, someone spent a whole lot of time uh, figuring out ring placement and stuff like that. And uh, I'm a believer that it is the best way to go about it. So the reason for that is um, the way the engine's rotating, um, whether it's the even side or the outside of the motor, the way the uh, crankshaft is coming into the oil and throwing oil up on the cylinder bolts, um, that has to do with the oil orientation so that um, the gaps are opposite the side of um, the main oil splash coming off the crankshaft and stuff like that to give you a little bit better uh, oil ring seal. Um, these aren't like a really low tension ring like uh, you'd have in a highly um, 
efficient uh, natural aspirated motor or something like that. And uh, low tension rings, you'll a lot of times see pistons with uh, little holes in them. And uh, that is actually for uh, com the combustion pressure, um, helps expand the ring at uh, lower RPM and stuff like that. Um, or higher RPM as well, but um, when there's the low tension on there, um, is to reduce drag um, on the rings to free up some horsepower. But turbo application, that's not really needed. So this is an aluminum block with sleeves. You know, you bore them out, replace them, do what you gotta do. I'd like to order up a couple sleeves for this block so we have some spares so that something we hurt something, we could knock it out and slam another one in. But I do have another one of these blocks that we're gonna have to um, eventually take to the machine shop and uh, get finished up. But that's as time allows. So right now we're gonna go through, um, get the block up on the um, engine stand, and then uh, slap the crank in it, slap the billet crank in it, and uh, put some bearings on the rods, start slapping those suckers in. So rings or rods on, rods around the pistons, rings around the pistons, and uh, yeah. Another step down.